So everybody, welcome to this latest edition of our ongoing series, Meet a Nose, where we invite the most interesting people in um, Scent to talk about the work that they do, whether it's as perfumers or creative directors or, or more. Today, we're super excited to welcome Kaya Sarindo, uh, calling in from New York. So welcome, Kaya. When it comes to perfumery, I actually, if I've, it, it somehow was always calling me in a bit because when I had my creative agency, I had an opportunity to do an exhibition for Serge Luton, but for his illustrative works, and it was going to be sponsored by Shoedo. And um, back in those days, what I used to do is I used to focus specifically on developing um, collaborative projects with brands and artists. And um, for some reason, it never happened. And then a few years later, I was working with a whole bunch of niche publications. Um, this is like O32C when it was a newspaper. It wasn't even a magazine. Neo2 from Spain, Plus81 from um, Japan, Kilimanjaro from London. So I was, I was working with a lot of independent publications um, and basically doing exhibitions and programs for them, trying to bring basically the experience of the turning of the page to life um, through marketing and events. And then I, I was approached by Terry, um, Terry, Terry Jones from ID Magazine UK, the original founder. And um, during that time, he was doing the 25th anniversary of ID. The exhibition was called Identity. It was a traveling exhibition. So he had like PJ Harvey do a sound installation, all these amazing, um, fashion designers that are involved in ID's history, had a presence there as well as photographers. And Terry had this idea, he's like, well, let's, it would be amazing if we can have scent involved. So we got Simrise involved in, 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 in the program. And for example, like Jeremy Scott did like the scent of the eighties, that kind of thing. Um, and when we had the exhibition, the exhibition I was managing was the one for New York, was, which was at the Chelsea Art Museum, which is not there now. So if you're from New York, you probably remember. And um, we used it, it's funny because they were so clever and it's like the techniques that they used at that time are, are things that I'm using now. Um, like for example, they, for the exhibition, they were sending strips of papers and they had it installed in fans and all this other stuff, right? And um, the team from Simrise came and they're like, wow, this is such an amazing experience, you know. Um, they liked the idea that the designers and the perfumers worked one on one. And um, they said they would love to do more of this. And it's a shame that it kind of didn't leave the exhibition. It was just for that experience, that moment. And for me, um, at the time, I had a, at a creative agency, so um, I was like, wow, it's funny because this is really the medium that, for me, I feel it, it kind of ticks all these boxes, all these things that I've wanted to do. I, I always wanted to kind of create shared experiences. I always wanted to create, I wanted something that can be integrated meaningfully every day in a person's life. And, and all these things, I said, you know what, um, can I pitch you an idea for a concept? So I pitched um, my last company, Six Sense, to them. And I was hoping just to get an agency fee and just kind of do the concept. But then they were like, you know what, we'll give you the perfumers, we'll give you a budget for raw materials, but um, you got to do it yourself. And I was like, oh, wow, I'm really not in this medium. You know, I'm not, this is not my practice. And, but you know, <clears throat> I thought about it for maybe two, two weeks because I was about to say, you know what, I need to go on to a different pitch because New York is expensive and I need to live, you know, mm. and I didn't have the money to start a new company, you know, so, but the idea kept kind of, kind of calling me in a sense. So I, I spoke to a, a really close friend of mine who owned a fashion boutique in New York and I said, listen, there's this opportunity and um, I can create the... I have the conceptual framework for this collection, this collaborative collection of fragrances that we do um, annually, but I, I can't do the curation for that collection. And he says, yeah, let's do it. At the time he was managing a lot of brilliant 
um, emerging fashion designers like Gareth Pugh, Mary Catranza, Junji, all these designers. And um, he was the best person to, to do the curation for that. And, he, and, he, and he's, he's, he's an amazing person. And um, so we presented and we say, fuck it. We said, excuse my language, sorry. And so, no, please, the comfortable um, space. I swear all the time. <laughs> that, let's do it. We said, let's do it. Let's, let's figure out how we can do the, pull together the money. And we did it. And we launched Six Cents. And um, when was this? This was this was like what a decade, a little more ago, right? Yeah, I think this was two thousand six, two thousand seven. Oh, so a while, yeah, okay. Yeah, and every year we release six fragrances with six different designers. And then during that time, I kind of um, it became very clear to me what how the role that I would like to play in this medium or this scent with, with fragrance. And, and um, after doing Six Cents, I think we did it for four years. We did four collections. Um, I decided to move to Berlin and, and start a new, chart a new chapter because um, as you know, Saskia, you know, fashion and fragrance have always had this kind of relationship for years, you know. We, we were not inventing the wheel. The only thing that we did is we added a little coolness to it and we had emerging designers. And that's yeah, it. I mean, but in a way you, I mean, cause yeah, fashion and fragrance have always been hand in hand, but I mean, the, the, the connection of these emerging designers was, I mean, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm not a historian, but it feels like that was pretty fresh, you know? Thanks. Yeah, at the time. And as doing Six Sense, I, 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 I really realized that um, I, we always involved artists. We always got artists involved to kind of articulate a certain scent or these kind of things. <clears throat> and originally, I, my idea was to always evolve in that way, but we never really evolved in that way because you know, we got comfortable with the structure that we had, you know, and it, it was a strong structure, so why change it, you know? Mm. Um, but a part of me wanted to kind of expand this conversation of implementing scent um, are using scent as this um, tool, as, as this artistic device um, across different mediums, you know. So in, in, in the, the Sixth Sense context, we're able to give these really emerging designers with really interesting ideas and aesthetics the opportunity to use the scent and to ac accentuate the experience of their brand, you know. <clears throat> and in that way, it's also an easy sell. So if there's a concept boutique and they're selling Gareth Pugh and you have a Gareth Pugh fragrance, cha-ching, it's easy, yeah, you know? Yeah, totally. Um, it wasn't necessarily that way as well because that was during, this, during that time, the, it was the collaboration era. There was so much collaboration. Come de Gerson, collaboration with this. This and that, collaboration with this. And for me, I felt that <clears throat> we had to kind of, it's a, it's a collaborative product project with perfumers and designers but we had to infuse it with a deeper sense of meaning and so I said you know what for each collection what we do is we we can align with a charity and it's not something that we kind of kind of guilt people into buying oh these fragrances are fashion designers and charity it's something that you actually discovered when you open the box it's not something that oh, we can cool. yeah and there was a different charity each season and we tried to kind of frame the the conceptual framework of each collection was somehow related to that charity. Do you have an example? I mean, a lot of people don't even know. Yeah. No, What's no. an example of a charity and a design? I mean, what was the, the trio, like an example of a trio? Yeah. For example, War Child was our second collection. And I think that, that collection, that collection was focused, the first collection we say aesthetics. So the mm -hmm. first collection was focused around aesthetics and Gareth Pugh and all these people. Um, and the charity was Designers Against AIDS. Oh, cool! Yeah. And they're already engaged in a fashion capacity, so it worked. And then the second collection was with um, War Child, with that that supported kids that were affected by war. Hmm. And we we tried to we set a structure. And I get I guess this is a part where I'm very. I, I think I'm pretty good at is, is, is the briefing process when it comes to dealing with the perfumers because I don't edit the perfume. I just say mm. this is what it is. And then when they give it, that's your true interpretation. And that's what I stand for. Well, by. that's rare. I mean, I live with a designer. Mm. So. 
that approach yeah. is so rare. I mean, most times that's not the case. So it's cool. I, mean, I don't ever. You can ask yeah. Mark when he comes on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll ask Mark. <laughs> the, so for War Child, what we try to do is we try to ask the designers to kind of think more about their adolescence and less about their aesthetic, their mm. discipline that they're working in. And so they were, each of them, they were counting these kind of memories of, of childhood and these and that was the fragrance so it's not necessarily an olfactive extension of their aesthetics but an, an extension of who they were when they were a child which ultimately who they are today mm, that of course matters. yeah no that makes sense yeah um so fast forward with with fully i kind of i started to kind of develop these kind of feelings of 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 meaning 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 and, and, and that's why when I, when I, I always say scent and because I feel that like perfume and fragrance has so much baggage. Mm, you know? Yeah. And, and I have, I have complete respect for the art form and, and, and all my contemporaries and, 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 and the, the fragrance houses and everything. I, I love them all. And there's some amazing people working in these places. Um, but I try to get rid of that whole thing and, and just speak more about the scent aspect. And with Folie, I said, well, I learned about really about creating meaning and how, how, how does the role that a scent plays in a person's life? And um, how can I work with these artists in a way where the fragrance really serve to expand the individual? Because mm -hmm. ultimately that's, I'm not here to serve the perfume industry. I'm here to serve humanity, that's it, period. Yeah, 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 and I, I don't I don't have any desire to um, be the most famous whatever fragrance brand, but I do have a desire that people will collect fragrances like they collect books, they read it, they they live that journey, they reference it, they give it to a friend, whatever you know. Mm -hmm. So um, that was the mindset when I went to Berlin, and which was a great place to kind of have that journey, and. Um, I I was working on a concept for a year and I didn't do anything. I said, shit, man, I need to do something, you know? So I partnered up with the, the Soho House group and I said, well, listen, um, let's do, I, I, I'm working on this brand with artists and stuff like that. And I think I, the first medium that I'm gonna address olfactively is film because um, long time, I've, I've always been thinking about the, evolution of film and the evolution of of um perfumery and i'm a, I'm a huge fan actually of, of francois cody and, and and that whole those beginnings actually and and if you and if you look at the history of film and how it catapulted into this kind of commercial industry and you look at the history of perfumery that catapulted in this kind of really commercial huge industry and then over the course of time you see this kind of revisit this kind of return to the artistry like a a lot of art house films kind of blowing up a lot of independent directors blowing up and you can almost see the parallel with perfumery as well totally. a lot of art house um or niche perfumery blowing up and and knowing who the perfumers are and these kind of stuff and I was like, wow, man, you know what? It really does fit. Maybe I should really address um, um, film first, you know? And then you, you have the, you, in, in, in film, you, you, you can look at the whole, the action film and, and these kind of more commercial films and you can almost say, yeah, there's a, there's a fragrance that, that can fit that category. Then you can look at something more romantic and some comedy like a Woody Allen you know, what kind of, what, what fragrance brand kind of relates to that experience. Then you look for like a sci-fi, maybe it's a centric molecule, you know, so there's these things. But I always felt that the challenge with film, the film industry and the fragrance industry, that it was, it moves so fast to such this commercial industry that you didn't have those moments where there are artistic movements like Dada and Fluxus where people yeah. were sitting around coffee tables and drinking and talking totally. and stuff. And, um, but that's the thing that really creates culture, 
Yeah. Well, why do you think that hasn't happened in perfumery up until fairly? I mean, because now it's kind of happening, I think. But yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it? Yeah. Do you think because it's a commercial enterprise, so so directly, or I mean, I feel that the it's just breaking away from the bottle. I always like when I when I speak to some of my collaborators, collaborators, and and um, staff and colleagues i say you know how do we break away from the bottle bottle so i try to do things in the opposite you know mm. um because i feel that once it's put in a bottle or just this thing is that it it feels like this commodity yeah you know? it feels like this commercial thing but then in, in back in the days and uh, don't quote me on this i have to yeah. My memory you, you know this is recorded right <laughs> just oh, yeah but i think i think i think then that um, like Cody, they, they were, he collaborated with ceramicists and, and also he, he knew like um, um, Picasso and things like that, right? And this doesn't necessarily happen now yeah. so much or it hasn't happened so much. Yeah. You know? um, sorry, I lost my string. No, it's um, okay. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, because perfume is such a commodity that, uh, yeah, it just feels like that space for collaboration. The, the bottle, I was trying to get to, because yeah. um, um, back then, maybe they, they worked on some kind of, like, really beautiful um, ceramic piece, and it was just an object. Yeah. But because of the advertising, which is, which is another thing that I, it, it doesn't annoy me, but I feel that we can do better. Um, the visualization of scent you know and um these things make it a little bit more difficult for it to be perceived as this artistry and then you have the olfactive component mm -hmm. where a perfume stops at the point where it's not aesthetical anymore yeah. You know? yeah and then there's people that i respect a lot and and there's people doing ex exhibitions that we that really push that and say you know fuck it i'm i'm yeah. gonna this completely non-aesthetic, you know, yeah. and if you like it, you like, if you don't, you don't, but ultimately this is the message that it needs to send. Right. And I know you're probably gonna ask me about challenges, but one, this is one of my challenges in perfumery is that um, like I, I've developed fragrance with some very prominent artists and, and you would think that, I thought that all artists no matter what, they're just going to go for the concept because yeah. the problem I was having with the fashion designers is that because they, they're so used to working with materials and textures and then they, they, they smell like, you know, they, they smell of etivir or whatever and they're like, oh, I really like this. Let's go in this direction. I say, hey, hey, you know, that's really not the concept. It's not the concept, <laughs> yeah. So we, it, so we start with the concept and then it goes so far from what, and then the fragrance is finalized and then I'm in a position where I have to actually sell the concept but it's not the concept <laughs> so you almost feel disingen it's a disingenuous not genuine not real yeah. you know, like you're faking it yeah. and um that's one thing i, I it's, it's, it's tough you know like to tell them to kind of reserve what you personally like olfactively this is the mission of where we're trying to accomplish no matter how grotesque that scent may be because ultimately it's mm, if someone really recognizes it and feels it, it, it serves their purpose. Yeah. You know? yeah. uh, it's not about how many people, how many people. How yeah. it or how pretty it, it is, or yeah. Well, how accurate it really depicted yeah. that, what it's trying to interpret. And yeah, it's, it's interesting. I find, I've had the same experience where working with artists and they just say, yeah, but it doesn't smell good. And I'm like, well, it's kind of the point, you know? Um, so, so let's talk a little bit about your relationship within the industry. Cause I know, I know you've expressed feeling a little bit like an outsider, uh, which I of course see as a point of, um, of pride and power, but uh, it's my, it's my opinion. Like, how do you relate to the industry and what has been hard within the industry? What's been great within the industry? I mean, you certainly operate at a high level, so. You know, it's a beautiful um, I think uh, there's quite a few challenges and there's a lot of great things as well. Um, all right, let's, let's, I don't want to really get super political, but um, look at what's going on in the United States right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's okay to bring that up. Huh? <laughs> I feel, personally, I feel that, um, In our industry, we maybe we, I don't want to say 
there's a lot of shallow stuff, you know, and the shallow stuff has the biggest budget, so they reach the masses more. Whereas the more indie stuff, they don't really have that big budget, so there's a, a small amount of people know about it, right? But um, it just feels very frivolous, and 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 I would love the day that we can actually olfactively address like certain tensions, you know, yeah. and then someone would look at you and someone would tell me, what are you talking about? Just fragrance, re addressing something very, what are you talking about? But it can, yeah. but the only way you can do that is if you create a culture. And yeah. that's why I think about film and perfumery a lot because you had this commercial industry, but then you had like a blow up of so many compelling documentaries, mm -hmm. you know, they were using the medium in that way. Yeah. So if, you, if you use the medium of scent in that way, what would the outcome be? I'm not saying that, especially during this time, I did a fragrance with um, Mark Buxton for my first collection, um, uh, Listen and Olfactive for La N. And La N is a very aggressive fragrance. It's a very sharp and, and, and it's, a, it's a powerful fragrance. Well, it's an intense movie too, huh? Powerful movie. Yeah. <laughs> And it, it's like, well, if you guys are going to go firing and blowing up stuff, might, you might as well wear Ella and get you in the mood. That's a very like simple way to talk about it. But I do feel that in, in, we, we do have the medium and we do have the tool to actually address certain more complicated issues. But um, because the lion's share of, 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 of the brands are communicating in a certain way and they're reaching a certain amount of masses. It, it takes time, it's harder, you know, yeah. to do so. And I think the only way to do that, to get to a point is where we really kind of create this culture around it and, and um, where people start looking at fragrance as just, uh, you know, a few drops of oil in a, in a bottle with some liquid and 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 in a, in a fancy flacon you know yeah. that's um i mean it's changing the perception about perfume as just mere luxury object to consume uh into like a, a creative uh, tool right you know and it's a major undertaking you know <laughs> yeah with you guys are doing it i mean yeah well, i mean you know in our own way but i mean yeah the thing is you have to have a you have to have a big reach in order to make cultural change you know and i think that that's where actually your practice is is for various reasons but that's one of the things i find most interesting about your practice is you're doing this but you're also not you know keeping out of lecture you're not keeping out of fashion you're, you're embracing it as a, as, a, as a medium and as a tool which is i think really powerful because people pay attention to that stuff you know they love it why not i love it you know why not use those tools um, yeah. And that's powerful. That's the powerful, most powerful aspect of what you do, in my opinion, in addition to the beautiful work, you know. Uh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, don't want to be, I don't want people to think I'm always I'm complaining about perfume with the next challenge. No, you're not. I think you're, you've always been very positive about it, you know. I guess the next challenge is, is also the, the retailers. And I, 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 I feel that one of the reasons that I, you might hear the trains because the train is right by No problem. My, you know, you're in New York. <laughs> and a lot of these apothecaries, they, they really champion, oh, we sell these really amazing niche perfumes and da, 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 and this is the story and blah, blah, blah. But <clears throat> to be honest, I find them, a lot of them very disingenuous hmm. because there's a lot of amazing niche brands some some brands that i'm friends with that don't ever get any opportunities yeah. Yeah. because ultimately there's one they want what's they don't Sounds. want to work for a sale yeah. you know so they either have to put more attention and focus on those sales staff so they can educate them enough so that they can sell that product or it's already hot tons of Instagram posts and people are just going to pick it up just for this. It's a metric molecule. Okay. I don't even know how it smells. I want to get it. You know what I mean? And I, I, I just don't like that whole dynamics about the, the whole sales and stuff in perfume. Yeah. And I, I completely stay away from it. Actually, I went in the complete opposite of it because um, I decided, well, if 
if an apothecary is really not the environment to really showcase my concepts, or not even my concepts, because I don't even see these perfumes as my concepts. I see myself more as a curator or an elevator, you know, mm. but the, 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 these, are, these are independence of me. But if they can't present it well and they can't really talk about it well, I'd rather put them in a museum shop where there's absolutely no education on fragrance. I, sometimes I go to these music shops and, I, and I'm really cool with these seal staff. They say, hey, what's going on? Da, da, da. We have a chat. And they know absolutely nothing about fragrance. Someone will be, I'll be right there and someone would ask them something about their fragrance. They're like, oh yeah, he does it. You know, I'm like, okay. <laughs> but I love this dynamic of having fragrances in, in places where people don't know shit about how to talk about it. Yeah. And so, in a museum because you can put a pencil in a museum a pencil that's black erected like a little dick or something and you look at it and someone would say whoa what is that it must be an object from Urs Fischer you know what right. I mean or totally. same place, right they automatically feel that this object has a deeper sense of meaning right and and I and I find that so fascinating I'm like okay cool perfect well let's put a few bottles of fragrance. The sales staff don't know anything about fragrance and people that go to museums, they automatically think that a perfume, this perfume here must be something special. So they'll take the time to actually read the little panel yeah. and they connect with it on their own terms. Yeah, yeah. And that's love. So you're not in a apothecary where someone is steering you to Byredo or steering yeah, you totally. to smaller, yeah. quick sellers, but they, you actually discover something by yourself and you have your own personal connection to it. Yeah. And that's the magic, I think, you know? Yeah, and so contextualized I, by art and by culture and stuff, you know? I mean, yeah. Yeah, so makes sense. this is kind of where I, I decided with that whole thing. Um, okay, well, so, so, so just because I'm curious, how, how, so you, you do a lot of collaboration, um, a lot of collaboration, and you collaborate with people that like, I mean, I mean, just one example among many, like Isaac Julian, Turner Prize nominee, um, one of the best artists I think I've ever seen in my life. And I have like some artist crushes and he's one. Um, yeah. And then I was like, God, I wish he would do some perfume stuff. And then you're like, oh yeah, we're doing something. I'm like, oh, Kwakaya, amazing. You know, like you're the one. So, I mean, how do you pick these people? How do, how do you go about it? What's the, and, and a lot of them are, are definitely in the realm of culture. They're not, you know, they're not, Isaac Julian isn't famous to everybody, you know. Um, how do you pick these folks, you know? Um, surprisingly enough, a lot, a lot of these artists already have this desire, already have some connection to fragrance. That's, that's oh. really cool to know, yeah. Um, and, and Isaac is that case, you know, he, he really loves perfume. And, and um, I wish I had like a really kind of fancy answer for you. Yeah. Is what I but I don't, yeah. you know, really just pick people that I feel are amazing. They do special work. They've connected with me. So how can they not connect with you? It's like, yeah. shoot, this is Michi Sakamoto, you yeah. know, how, how can you not feel this guy's music? Yeah. And if, and if you, and all these people that I look at, I'm like, wow, you know, I would really love to experience a George Kondo painting olfactively. Right. I would really love to experience a Bill Henson photograph olfactively. So it's really just asking that question and say, oh, who has enough texture and, 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 and a, a certain body of work that can frame a certain scent? Yeah. Um, yeah, but this, this, I, to be honest, I really wish I had a curator, so I don't have to think about it. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know if you need a, I think maybe you don't get a curator because you're obviously doing the right thing, doing, making the right choices, at least from my perspective. I'm, I'm always like, ah, how did that, like, it's perfect. Everything's for me. I mean, we obviously have similar tastes, but so how does it work? So, so if let's say, let's take, just because it's on my mind, not because I'm trying to really focus on, on Isaac <laughs> Julian, but so, you know, you decide I'm going to work with Isaac Julian uh, and you obviously you find a perfumer to work with as well. And that's typically Mark. Is that correct? Yeah. But for, for Isaac's fragrance, I actually worked with Giridon, with okay. um, Jan Vassina. Okay. And it really depends because sometimes you have projects where um, 
because we're small. So sometimes I say, you know what? I really believe <clears throat> in this project. I'm going to put up X amount of money on it and just pay the perfumers and everything. You know, sometimes I get a perfumer to contribute that doesn't charge a lot. Mm -hmm. But um, it's also pairing people with certain aesthetics, you know? Yeah. Like there's, there's certain things that I, I just directly know that I know that Mark is gonna respond to very well. Right. Then there's certain things where I feel like, well, I'm not sure who's the best perfumer for right. this to be on, yeah. you know? Yeah. So then in that case, maybe I say, let me work with, let's see what the fragrance house, what which perfumers might yeah. really feel this body of work and, and create the best outcome for it. Yeah. And that's the other thing is like, I, I <clears throat> like Mark himself, he always says, hey, Kaya, you know, we need to work with Quentin Tarantino. I love him. And I'm like, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, I know you love Mark Quentin. Yeah. Yeah. But unfortunately, that's not a part of this full, fully structure. But right. we're going to try to do it because I know you really love him, you know? And it's that kind of thing because you really want that perfumer that knows that person that's creating that to, to get it and to gel with it yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. that's the most important thing because yeah. it should never feel like a brief because ultimately we're such a small company we're not paying billions of dollars for these these outcomes you know right well for them you must feel that like they have some kind of connection to that person or that kind of body of work or mm -hmm. they feel that they have something that can really respond to that brief and that's the, the most important thing you know yeah and, and then again it's like and that's another reason why i don't i don't i don't edit anything at all it's like i say hey listen these this is this is the artist this is the body of work i speak with isaac i say isaac hey listen first things first what do you love what do you hate so we can just remove what he hates Okay, so let's talk about this video piece. What moments do you think are the most significant moments? Uh, these, this is, okay, excellent. So these are the moments I'm gonna tell whoever the perfumer is, is to really pay attention to. Mm -hmm. And then ultimately from that point, I tell the artist, I said, listen, hey, because over the years I've realized if, if you give too much room for revisions, yeah. they start to go into the space of what they like. Yeah, I can get in a little pixel bucky <laughs> as, as my husband puts it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you kind of cut that. You make yeah. sure that you understand what they really like personally. It's okay, cool. You, you, you really hate these kind of things. So let's not, let's see if we cannot use that, those materials and still arrive at where we're going to arrive, you know? Mm -hmm. And then it's, that's it. Are the artists that's ever in touch with the perfumers directly or, or is that something that you think would, I don't know. I mean, is there like yeah, a yeah, tri sometimes. triangle of communication? Yeah. No, 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 no. Sometimes it's just I, I have them just call directly or, or speak yeah. or, or I copy Mark. But I, I realize is that it's easy if, if I compile the information, format yeah. it. Because also I find that, um, I don't know, is, is anyone from like Fragrance Houses here? But um, I find that the perfumers at Fragrance Houses, they work really well with detailed briefs. Right, 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 yeah. And other perfumers, some independents, they kind of just want that emotion, that right. kind of, you yeah. know, it's, you know, you know, it's a fantasy through a rock. Yeah. With your legs or whatever. That's it. Okay, I got the fragrance. Go for it, you yeah. Send yeah. Them, you send them this whole long thing and they're like, um, I don't know where to go. Yeah. And I, I find that the outcomes are not as great. Yeah. So the certain perfumers, I would really literally just give them a line and just what this person doesn't like, what he likes, and then say, hey, please experience this um, video. Please, please listen to this music. And mm -hmm. that's, and whatever the impression is, that's it. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's cool. When I was a kid, my dad was in public policy and the arts, and he told me, uh, you know, honey, when you grow up, like one thing you need to know is, Never, never, ever, 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 ever allow design by committee. If ever you have any power to get rid of design by committee, get rid of design by committee. And I feel like it's, it's kind of, it's, it's, uh, it's nice for me to hear you saying similar things, you know? Because um, yeah. I but think, sorry, go ahead. But also, sorry, sorry to cut you, ask no, you. Okay. But um, 
I get all, I look at I get questions all the time from like some of our customers say, hey, why don't you start from the beginning when they're direct? Like for example, this is probably maybe the first time I've ever been with a filmmaker from the beginning of a work. Mm. Like Wong Kar Wai is working on a new a new film. So now I'm in touch. <laughs> And, what? Um, <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, I but, I, but that process, from because they're still they're still finding a language for the arts, right? They're still understanding what art they're working on, right? And although there's all these systems in place and the designs and the crews and the sketches, da da da, they um, they're still finding a language for it. So imagine creating a fragrance for a person that is still fine a language for what he's trying to create. It's, not, it's a headache. Totally. You know? I mean, oh yeah, because it's changing maybe all the time. Where, maybe he knows where it could, even with films, there's so many times where the films change their ending, you know, completely. Totally. So it's supposed to end in death, but no, it doesn't end in death. It actually ends in rebirth. Okay, so maybe before we would go with some incense, but now it needs to make it really positive in the end, effectively. So it's weird that way, though. No? Crazy. Um, yeah. I think Mark I think is. Mark is that, I'm so loud. I'm so loud. I think Mark I think is on Mark the call. Ah, oh, cool. Mark, show yourself. I'm sorry, Mark. I know France. The connection is not so amazing. Okay. Well, we can keep talking. But Mark, if you are here. Um, he has to unmute himself. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, Mark, if you're here, please unmute yourself or I can unmute you. I assume this is... Um, do you know what his handle is, Kaya? Because I see a Mark Bayan, but that might not be Mark Buxton. Oh, I don't know. Okay. I don't think so, maybe. Never mind. Well, we, can, we should keep talking while he figures it out or while he joins. Um, uh, ba -ba -ba. So... Um, this might be, I, I, you know, it's good to keep it positive and I definitely want to keep it positive, but I am curious about um, how you feel. Uh, well, you, we've talked a little bit about being an outsider. Do you feel like you've, you've found your place within the, the artisan niche independent world or within the mainstream perfume world? Or are you, have you felt like you've gotten, um, I don't know, uh, credit, yeah. credit, you know? I don't know how to phrase it. I don't know, I don't think we like, or maybe you don't care. Well, that's another thing. I really don't really think about that part. That I, I stopped thinking about it a long time ago. I know that we don't get as much love. Um, and we're criticized, which is, is right. Because at the end of the day, everyone, they, 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 they deserve their own opinions. And that's completely fine. Yeah. It's like whatever you say is not going to change my course, you know. But if it can really, if I look at it and I say, wow, this is, you, you made a really great point, you know? The funny thing is that I just, no one ever just tells me, say, hey, I was thinking this. And I'm like, ah, oh, you know what? That's amazing. Because I'm actually really open. I'm not so stubborn. I'm like, yeah. oh, you know, you said this and that's it. I'm not going to do it, you know? Yeah. But um, for one, I've tried my best really to kind of, over the years, slowly and slowly and slowly move the brand as far as I can away from perfumery. Yeah. Because, and, and, and it's the scent community. And it's, it's, <clears throat> and the reason why I say that is because, um, Like I said before, I'm not I'm not doing it for an industry. I'm kind of doing it for humanity. What's most important for me is that people who most of my customers probably largely don't don't have never worn fragrances, mm -hmm. and they're kind of um, we've converted them, you know. Yeah. But um, I I I just want to keep our thing going as it is, and yeah, and and. Yeah. Work much you know um, i mean so because uh, criticism could be i mean i get you know i get it at the institute i get it personally and uh it, you know when i first started this i would be really gutted and i would spend nights going oh I've done, you know i'm doing everything wrong and they're right and and over the years i've developed a thicker skin about it um so it doesn't trip me up as much but i mean how do you how do you deal with criticism because it, it can be really difficult you know and people can be pretty vicious you know um yeah yeah 
Yeah, with criticism, um, to be honest, I really love, <clears throat> I'd rather someone say something than nothing, to be honest. Whether it's yeah. bad, I'd rather they say something than nothing. And um, I, I, the most important thing for me is, is, okay, well, I'm trying to, this is the goal, this is what I'm trying to do with this. And someone gives me criticism that helps me to get there, I'm completely open. I, I won't get shattered by it at all. Mm -hmm. You know, even, even if it says, hey, listen, you need to completely revamp this, I'm gonna really give it some thought. Because I, I said, well, maybe this actually, this way that I've been working is not working. So maybe I need to kind of take this direction. Um, so yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't mind criticism, but I'm, tr I'm trying to, get back to your original question about the, we definitely are an outsider. That's one for, for sure, yeah. you know? And I always say that when you're on the outside, the view is, is, is nicer. Yeah. Because you have a wider view, you know? Um, and I like this idea of being very nimble and very flexible so that you can change directions at any point of time. You're not so fixed and you have this fixed into this one, you know, like, um structure you know um yeah yes yeah, yes i don't i don't i sorry i ask <laughs> no no it's okay i mean it's also it's sort of a weird question because i i say you know outsider but then i'm like outsider to whom you know there's like 30 perfume scenes you know um yeah, I mean, you know, I, I've always considered, for instance, myself an outsider, and then now somebody once told me, oh, no, you're a total insider, and I was like, insider to who? Like, it's sort of like, what, what, what are we talking about when we say outsider, in a way, you know? Um, so I get that it's hard to answer, you know? One thing for sure is that I do feel that we do have a very different belief system than other brands. Right. Which makes us, it's like, it's like, it's like having a, your girlfriend or your wife or, or husband, a boyfriend, you know, and this, this, these are their values and then these are my values and then you have conflict, right? But then um, if we're not boyfriend and girlfriend and your values are that and my values are this, there's no conflict because I don't care, you know? Yeah. And I think with us, our values are very different because I, I give you a few examples. For example, the for I really don't believe in the whole advertising and the communications, the way that fragrances are communicated anymore. As as a person who was a creative director working in the creative creative agencies, of course I want to come up with amazing concept for a perfume. Oh, this is called La N. Let's make it really dark. Let's burn up something. Blah blah blah. Right. Mm -hmm. But then. Recently, I've, 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 I've learned that sometimes we overimpose a, a visual or an image on the consumer. We, we, we direct them too much, especially for this scent. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm sure this is maybe a larger conversation, another topic, but I, I, I'm, I'm a strong believer that we, we should not impose so much. And that's the problem because fragrance is invisible. All you have is the flacon. What do you if you can't do a visual representation of that fragrance, what do you do? You that's, know, and I get that, good that dilemma, right? So, but I'm, I've, I've come to the solution that, you know, I just ask young, like I have a lot of young or emerging or even some of them are pretty established artists that just contact me, hey, well, we really love this fragrance. I say, okay, cool, I just send it to you. I don't, you don't have to buy it from me. I send it to you, if you like it, just create something and tell me what did that fragrance mean to you? And to me, that's really the purest form of representation for that scent because I know that he directly engaged with that perfume and he had some kind of visual or some kind of sensation from it that kind of evolved into the symmetry. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, it, it's a hard thing to, go when you, you, to scale when you're a million dollar, a huge company, right? For a small company, it's an easy thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I hear, I hear you. Um, um, I know we're both trying to get a hold of Mark to, to let him know that we're waiting for him. But yeah. I, so somebody asked uh, about what happened to uh, uh, Holy Motors. Uh, was it discontinued? The, David asked if, 
with the holy ah, the holy. Holy no it's there it's like sometimes we we don't produce a lot of fragrances um like a huge amount of bottles so we have the formula we have the archive and um for that particular fragrance we didn't produce a lot of it so mm. maybe we will revisit this is an interesting scent i love the film Oh my God, the film blew my, I, I didn't, I didn't, I walked into that not knowing what was happening and I was like, what is going on here? It's amazing. So good. Um, what sorry, are you working? You what? Sorry, David. Is it David? Yeah, it was David. Yeah, you sorry. got it. Um, we talked a little bit about your collaborators. We talked about sort of your, your, um, well, we didn't really get into it really. Uh, but some of the challenges about running a company, I know, I know we talked a lot about well, yeah, what are, I mean, how do you, how do you see the challenges of, of doing what you do? <laughs> Big question. Yeah, the challenges, um, I guess the biggest challenges is how do we kind of remove this experience away from the bottle and just kind of put into a gallery or, or make it a culture, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, and like sometimes even when I know even when I'm contacting artists and I'm explaining, hey, we're going to make a fragrance, it's an extension of your work, and da da da. Still, it's very abstract for them, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> if I was to say, um, I'm going to paint a portrait of you, they know exactly what that is about. They know that you're going to bring a canvas, you have some brushes and some pigments, and you're going to paint a canvas. Mm. Um, same thing for film, same thing for, you know, these kind of things. If I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come and create a score for your life and I'm using this ensemble and whatever, you know. But sometimes for fragrance, I think it, it's very abstract. And the more that we kind of work in this way, the more easier it, it is to have these conversations, especially from my agency side. When, it, when you talk about with the brands, you know, like when when I when I'm speaking with a book publisher, I say, hey, listen, I all right. These are your these are your book releases in 2000 fall 2019 20 um, 2021. There are five selections of books that I really love. I love these authors, and I feel that the scent would really be compelling. Let's figure out a way how we can implement the scent into the reading experience mm. it doesn't need to be a fragrance what who cares about the bottle mm. let's figure out a way how to do paper scent infused paper that is ins inserted in the book or in thinking these ways and for them it's when you talk to the marketing managers and things like that some amounts they don't get it so yeah. what i realize is that when you make those pitches just go to the creative director or the design team go even just a junior design person that they just completely get it like oh yeah cool 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 and then they it just kind of goes up from there right, right. and um that's one challenge you know because ultimately there's there's places where scent i feel is not needed but then there's things where i do feel that scent can be um can deepen that experience can, that can create rituals and these kind of things you know uh, I mean, okay, so let's talk about where scent isn't needed, because actually I think this is worth talking about. Um, uh, yeah, like, where, 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 is, where is it where you, I mean, sometimes you feel like scent's kind of shoehorned into something because it's, it's the thing, it's the going thing, you know? But I mean, are there instances where you feel like, you know what, we don't need to do scent here, <laughs> you know, like what? Um, I had a friend who, he's, he's, he's involved with um, Uber, you know, and I know Uber had an issue with this thing, but they wanted to revisit this idea of, of implementing scent, but a non-scent, you know, and, and it's in this kind of environment, it's really challenging. It's, I would prefer this if there's a scent that takes away scents, if that could be possible. You, you mean know? like a sort of deleting scent scent? Yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. And um, at first I was really passionate about, yeah, let's, cre let's create like a, the, the olfactive identity for Uber, which is the most minimal scent ever created, you know? Mm -hmm. But then I realized hey, maybe it, it, sh it shouldn't exist because then you, you have less, con it, it's, there's so many variables within that whole system, you yeah. know? You have one guy that says, you know what, you know, forget this stuff. I'm going to wear the Uber scent plus my cherry because I really like it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, you know, all right, it's, it's just too much, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, also, like, you want to make sure to give people agency, you know? Yeah, Sorry, yeah. you're right. Yeah. 
Yeah. You're absolutely right. Restaurants is also tough because there's so much that is like going profile, on already. Stuff going on, yeah. You know? yeah. For a, a client project on um, this hotel in Zermatt on Omnia, we did different accords for different areas of the property. Mm-hmm. And um, one was needed to be for the restaurant. And we're like, wow, how do we implement that, you know, that scent for the restaurant? Yeah. Did the chef, would that, did that piss the chef off? Because I, I imagine no, the chefs would be like, hey, hey, no, hey. <laughs> no, but we, we created the scent for the restaurant, but it was never implemented in the restaurant. Right. Got it. <laughs> Inspired by. Yeah. Uh, Clara Wheel says consent in scent, which I think is funny. Sort of the scent, uh, the scent for consent. Definitely has a ring. Um, Donna has a question for you. She, she, she was, um, she's asking. Donna is here in LA and she says, actually, Donna, do you want to just ask directly? I know you. Do you feel like it, Donna? Uh, Donna? Hello. Hi. I just say, um, loving this. It's great. I love the way you think. Um, I'm just wondering, what's the best way? I've often thought about that. I, I've been making masks and masks and giving them to delivery drivers. And I, I thought of giving like a perfume vial. And I did give some to my neighbours. And I don't really think they understood why <laughs> I'm giving them perfume. I mean, I was saying it could be a nice little spray you know, to cover your mask. Anyway, the point is, how do you share perfume with someone who's new to perfume? You're talking about that a lot, which I love. And I love the idea of sharing smells with people. It doesn't mm. have to be pretty smell, but just some, to communicate something with someone who doesn't, um, who doesn't think that they need to know about perfume. Yeah, absolutely. I, I feel it completely. The, um, that's pr- probably one of the biggest reasons why I think I've, I've, I've stayed in perfumery for so long. Because... I feel that there's there's a lot of people, if they were introduced to a fragrance in the right way, is that they would really implement it into their their lives in some way, you know, um, and and that's why I try to make things a little bit more accessible. Um, and I say accessible by if if you're crazy about Tom York or Bjork or um, whoever, right? you already are Rei Kawakubo. Anything she creates, you just love. Whether it's fashion, an art piece, a, 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 a zine, you're automatically kind of open to experiencing something. You, you're open to experiencing more from her, you know? So it, it could be this little jewel, whatever. And they're like, wow, what is that jewel thing, you know? Because you have like a deep connection with that person somehow. And you might not be the person that's really interested in fragrance, but because it is, it comes through that line or somehow it's of that thought. It's like, well, all right, I really don't like um, fragrance. I love Gaspar Noé. Maybe I, maybe I might like this perfume. Maybe there's something in it that there's some ideas in it that will connect to me and what I, I, I um, somehow identify with. And these are the things that I try to find is like, what, what do people really identify with? What chart is they really like, you know, what spaces they like to go and using that almost as an entry point, you know? Um, and I don't know if that's the best way to answer that question. Is it? Well, okay? there's, there's a sort of follow-up, which I think will allow you to approach it in a different yeah. way. So Clara is asking, uh, what cues do you think work well to help prime people to engage with scent? Like, um, for instance, she says the movie theater sets people up to engage with a blockbuster movie. You're like prepared with the popcorn and whatnot. And mm-hmm. then you spoke about situating fragrances within museum shops for purchase, but for in situ smelling and experiences, are there any things you've noticed that help people to engage? Wait, um, cues that help question. people to engage? engage? To prepare to, uh, Clara, do you want to ask it directly actually? Cause I don't want to mangle your intentions the questions Clara feel free to unmute I'll unmute you actually uh, oh there yeah. you are hey <laughs> hey um hey. so I yeah. you ask about if you've noticed in your work any kind of like cues or like tricks that you go to to help people to prepare themselves to engage with scent on a deeper level beyond just kind of liking something or disliking it or noticing that there's a scent um you were saying before that by putting your fragrances for sale in like a museum shop, it primes people to engage with it differently. 
Um, but when it comes to kind of experiencing that in person rather than as a purchase, is there anything you've noticed? That's a, that's a really great question, actually. Um, I think it's really kind of removing it from its existing place. It's a, it's a, it's a good place to start as well, you know. Um, we did this, um, we did this scent installation at this techno event in, in Bushwick. And um, you're not expecting to experience scent in that space in that way, because what does a techno club smell like? Maybe in a warehouse, it's sweaty, it's dirty, it's dark, da 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 da, right? But because it's not supposed to be in that environment so prominent, automatically your attention is drawn to it. And I think that's with anything. Like once you, if you, if you, if, if, if a person goes to Times Square and they put like a little rickety house in it that's with all the architecture around Times Square, it's like, okay, why is this here, you know? So immediately it piques your interest. I think the problem right now, especially in perfumery, is that and especially within apothecaries, when you, go to, when you go to an apothecary shop or you have these kind of scent experiences, is that there's so many scents and, and, and you're just queued up to experience scents. But if you catch someone in an environment where they're they're not necessarily ready or 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 kind of um, uh, prepared to to appreciate scent, I think that's these are the times that they're most open because, and this is another thing that we did with um, with when we were doing the olfactive screenings. Um, for each of these screenings, we did nine screenings, like with. Um, we did a fragrance with the lobster, the virgin suicides and things like that. And I would always tell the audience is listen, the most important thing now is just to experience the film, you know, because what will happen is that you're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting. You're so focused on just smell this smell, but that's not, that's not the important part. The, the, the magic comes in the nuances, you know, mm. that's where the real magic is. And, um, and I'm not sure that's one idea. I'm sure if maybe, if, I don't know how much time we have, but, uh, and I'm, I'm so sorry, guys. I'm waiting. For, I know that Mark, it's Monday is a, a holiday, bank holiday in France. Oh, and I, I know he's, he's on his way to Normandy. So. That's okay. We can reschedule with Mark. It's, yeah. it's no big deal. Uh, it's quite late yeah. for him as well. So we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll uh, I'll pick him to do a, a special. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Sorry, sorry, everybody. We'll let you know when we reschedule. Uh, I'm not surprised, and I, I think it's totally fine because it's rather late for him there, and and Mark is a busy man with a family. Um, so, Kaya, what are you working on? What? Okay, I don't want to like oh, sorry, we have a relationship, so I, I don't want to share sorry, things. That, that, okay, I'm sorry. Did I answer answer that properly? Oh, uh, sorry, Claire. Um, yeah, that was great. Um, I guess I always struggle with that idea of like surprising someone with scent in case there's a really extreme reaction or something or it triggers something in that person that I couldn't have foreseen. Um, I guess, yeah, it's hard to know when to tell people to expect a scent or to expect the unexpected. But I think you're right, surprising people and using contrast is, is good. Yeah. It's an idea and, and, and maybe email me later, maybe I, I'll figure out some other some other te techniques or some things that we've done that might work but it's a it's an interesting thing to think about actually you know for me especially you know um, it's interesting in the context yeah. of consent and in, in the context of the u.s it's challenging because there is a lot of you yeah, know it's, public it's, health and sensitivities and i mean we we always opt for for signage you know um when we're working publicly but but that does sometimes ruin the effect so yeah. yeah, I wanted to, um, I, I was, I, I found some kids that were willing to do it some, you know, so that if they get arrested, it's okay, they'll get released, you know, and I was yeah. going to give them, like, um, we figured out a way how to put scent into helium balloons. So if you pop it, the oil is strong enough where you smell it. And I was cool. going to send, send them out to Grand Central and just fill Grand Central with all these balloons and stuff. Oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> but then I kind of chickened out of it because, you know, it's like, all right, I don't know, one of these guys are going to wrap me out. So, 
<laughs> yeah, it's also it's a very sensitive time right now in the U.S. It's like tread with caution, you know. <laughs> but then you know you 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 can if, if someone sees a bubble and they pick up this balloon and they pop it, they're immediately confronted with that scent. So that's yeah. the that's the that's the relationship. Ultimately, you want to have where there's an object and somehow you have to break into it almost. Right because your full attention is either there or you just don't know what's happening there. yeah that's a really that's a really interesting point um okay so so i don't want to take a, i know it's also you know in the afternoon for you kai you have plenty to do so just to close out i'm sort of curious about what you're working on now and what you're excited about now what's coming up you know what's yeah what's, i'm excited about you i i'm excited about your um scent week to be honest whenever it <laughs> yeah. happens i know oh, COVID. I know COVID is, is, has completely ruined this whole Everything, yeah. timing, but yeah, I, I, I really love that whole programming and this, the, the ideas that you had and everything to be in, yeah. in Los Angeles. And also it's closer to me where I can kind of, I, although I'm on the East Coast, I can come yeah. out there yeah. and experience. Yeah, I think I always run into you in Europe. And well, anyway. <laughs> yeah, we will be doing it again. I, yeah, I, I, you know, September might be a challenge, but definitely, I mean, definitely 2021, we're going to do a massive, like, catch up, big party, big party, and <laughs> you better be there, Kaya. I will, but I mean, I in will. terms of your own work, you That's know, what are you... I'm very excited about. Yeah. Um, uh, right now, um, maybe within a week or two, we're going to release these fragrances for direct relief. And it's a good buy, actually. It's like $17, and everything goes to direct relief. And it's called um, <clears throat> A Beginner's Guide to Teleportation. Oh, yeah. Awesome name. Yeah. So basically, one takes you to a cabin. One takes you to somewhere else. One takes you to somewhere else. And the idea, and we've, we've created these kind of guided meditations and kind of doing this kind of weird, playful thing where people basically spray the fragrance and you get to be you know in a cabin having whiskey with your friends you know that kind of thing yeah, so fantastic. and and that really it's it's nothing that i really make so much money from you know because it's, it's a more of a, a feel-good thing being and and contribution but i think it's something that's needed especially in this time where people are confined and they don't really know how to engage with scent you know and i think it's important that say hey, just because you're home doesn't mean you don't you have to wear a fragrance you know um so this is kind of this thing to kind of create this ritual so you can wear the fragrance as a perfume absolutely you can also just spray it in the space but it's just this guide to teleportation oh, i'm a bit of a geek like that you know i'm sorry yeah it's very sci-fi um, and then so we're just a limited amount of those and then we'll, we'll just put, pump it out really quick um i'm working with the uh, hako which is a Japanese paper incense company. Um, they're on Awaji, Awaji Island. They've been around for maybe a hundred years or whatever. And um, we're doing a series of invisible narratives. And they're just this like, this Japanese book here. They're about this format, you know? And they're all scented blank, but we've invited different authors to, read, to write like a page in it, but then, the rest of the book is incomplete. You have to burn it actually to experience the rest of the story. Oh, that's so really cool. Um, <clears throat> and I've, 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 I'm obsessed with incense. I'm obsessed with the rituals involved with incense, the, the history, the culture of incense. So um, we're working on a series of incense um, right now with uh, three musicians, and hopefully we can build up more. And hopefully, I don't know if that's going to come out soon. And then we release some new fragrances with um, Richie Sakamoto, Haruki Murakami. Um, I think Sasha Waltz fragrance will be out soon. Just tons of perfumes. And Incredible. they don't all have to sell amazingly. But if someone connects with it, I'm so happy. You know, that's it. Yeah, you're, you're making culture. It's, it's interesting. It's like beyond perfume, it's culture, you know, which is cool, you know. It means a lot coming from you. Oh, well. Um, all right. Well, Kaya, I, uh, I'm so, I'm selfishly really glad I got to talk to you for an hour because, you know, you're cool. And I always like connecting with you. And Ah, you're cool. You're oh. cool. I think everybody, and I'm so sorry, Mark, Mark, you see, this is the thing when you, when you tell someone, yeah, 
pop up spontaneously. Yeah. And <laughs> they just never show up. You know, it's like asking a guy, oh yeah, come over for a drink. And then they just never show up. Yeah. Know? It's okay. We'll schedule something with Mark later and I'll, I'll give him very specific time. Um, mm, yeah. He's a, he's, the, he's a wonderful guy, a great collaborator for you. And I'm excited that, uh, you know, anyway, so for everybody, thank you so much for your time. We will put this on the internet with Kai's permission. Um, and that will probably take a day or two to, to get the permission and, and do the editing and whatnot. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll email everybody when we have a chance to, to connect with Mark and create a, a, an edition with Mark, which I think maybe would also fill an hour, if not more. So yeah, no, in a way, I think we all win. Completely. Yeah, yeah, maybe we'll have you, maybe we'll have you interview um, him. I'm going to talk to him. I'm going to give him some shit. So. No, right. no, 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 it's okay. <laughs> Just as long as he's wearing his pearls. Huh? Um, so <laughs> thanks, everybody. And uh, another thing I, I should say is that we are, we are thinking about putting our Experimental Sense Summit online. Uh, uh, so uh, keep an eye out for some information about that, everybody. Yeah. Uh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And Kaya, hopefully. email about that. You was what? that that I submitted? So yeah. Not, yeah, 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 yeah. I've, I've written you and I'll read Yeah, I was a bit confused. It. I'm going to respond to that email. Okay. Yeah, no awesome, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your time. Have Thanks, a wonderful Thanks, everybody. Day. Kai, have a great afternoon. Bye. Wear a mask. Yeah, wear a mask. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.